We welcome everyone in our live and virtual audiences to Bethel Avey Church in Corsicana on the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, January the 28th, 2024. We will begin our service with the singing of our processional Holy, holy, holy. Sister Denise Freeman will do our call to worship. We will sing number seven in the Amy hymnal, Come Thou Almighty King. We will have prayer. Sister Deborah Uzzle will lead our scripture. Sister Penny Liggins will do our responsive reading. And uh, we will have our announcements and welcome to visitors by Sister Freeman. We'll have our altar call and Sister Ann Yancey will present our Black History Moment followed by the selection by our gospel choir. Let us stand holy, holy, holy. Behold, thy salvation come. Behold, 
his reward is with him, and his work before him, and together, and, and they, they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called Saul of a city not forsaken. Jesus said unto them, 
fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they wear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servant which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called to the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men are drunk, then that watch is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana and Cali, and manifest forth in glory, and his disciples believed on him. Amen. Responsive reading. After the two days he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Once, Once more the visit to Cana and Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. With this man heard that Jesus had arrived at Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will be. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news the boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. And together, then the father realized that the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second time Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. Uh, so that we can distribute those and encourage people to come and 
and join us for our uh, first in person uh, prayer breakfast since 2019 or 2020, uh, which was our 10th one. On February 24th, the Northwest Texas WMS and YPD uh, will have a meeting in Waco that generally starts at 9 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock. Uh, March 1st, the first half of the connection on budget is due. And then March 15th through the 16th is the Paul Quinn District Conference. Conference at Adams Chapel in Harbor Heights. Uh, those are all the announcements that I have for today, Reverend Nelson. But I do want to add two things to our uh, prayer list, which I failed to put on uh, yesterday. Uh, we want to add, if she's not out, she is on here, but we want to call her name Celia Strickland. Uh, we want to continue to pray for her and her health challenges. Also, we heard that Reverend and Sister Michael Donaldson have a new grandson uh, by Mike Jr. and his wife. Uh, and the child is in the hospital, and we want to pray for uh, their newest child and the Donaldson's newest grandchild. I don't know what is uh, the problem with him, but we want to pray for him. Plus, everyone else that's on our prayer list and our sickness show in this. And that is all the announcements that I have made up. Yeah. Any other announcements at this time? Received a flyer of the monthly meeting of the Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance. Will be to, uh, well, the monthly service will be held tonight at seven o'clock at Independent First Independent Baptist Church. The speaker will be Reverend Derry Johnson, pastor of Bethlehem Baptist Church. We. Uh, have official board right after the service. Sister Elsel went to a conference this last few days. Uh, yeah, she says it was a good conference, and I think she's worn out from it. And we will get some information uh, in the very near future and present to the church. Uh, we'll say a little bit more about that at the official board meeting. We do need to be in prayer for all those who have requested prayer. Do we have any other prayer requests at this time? I do realize that I am on the prayer list, but I'm asking you to really pray for me. I keep following. I don't know what's wrong with my God. pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee so much, Lord, for all your many blessings, and we lift up all those in need of prayer, all those who are, whose names are printed on the prayer list and those who are not. For my dear wife, I pray for her healing and strength and dealing with surgeries and different other health challenges. We're trusting you for the victory, Lord. We know 
We've had we've had setbacks before, but we've always moved forward in the name of Jesus. And we give thee praise and glory. We know we can't do anything without you. We know we can't accomplish anything on our own. But with you, all things are possible. For everyone in this church and everybody whose lives are touched by this church. We pray for the Donaldson baby, for the healing Lord, for all those that have come to my attention this week that needed prayer for healing and deliverance. We pray that you will be with them. We pray for strength to overcome. We pray for our nation and for our world. Yes, Lord. May our democracy endure. Yes. yes. Bring peace between Russia and Ukraine. Bring peace between Israel and Hamas. The problems with Iran and these other countries that doesn't look good at all. Please. Nevertheless, you don't lose control. And we give you praise and glory. Give us peace and not war. Give us love and not hate. Bring about peace and reconciliation to all who are odds, at odds with one another today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
returned to Houston and started a private law practice. Marvel was an American lawyer, educator, and politician. A Democrat, she was the first African American elected to the Texas Senate after Reconstruction, the first Southern African American woman elected to the United States House of Representatives, and one of the first two Americans elected to African Americans elected to the U.S. House from the former Confederacy. Alongside Andrew Young in Georgia. She received the right to deliver a powerful opening statement at the House Judiciary Committee hearing during the impeachment process against Richard Nixon. In 1976, she became the first African American and the first woman to deliver a keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. She received the Presidential Medal of Freedom among numerous other honors. She was the first African American woman to be buried in the state, Texas State Cemetery. George is also known for her work as chair of the U.S. Commission on Immigration. <laughs> She won a seat in the Texas Senate in 1966, becoming the first African American state senator in Texas since 1883, and the first black woman to serve in that body. <coughs> in the U.S. House of Representatives, in 1972, she was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, the first woman elected in her own right to represent Texas in the House. She received extensive support from her, from her from former president, Lyndon B. Johnson, who helped her secure a position on the House Judiciary Committee. In 1976, she, Jordan was mentioned as a possible running mate to Jimmy Carter of Georgia, became instead the first black American woman to deliver a keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. In November 1977, Barbara Jordan spoke at the 1977 National Women's Conference. <coughs> Other speakers included Rosalind Carter, Betty Ford, and Lady Bird Johnson, to name just a few. On July 25, 1974, Jordan delivered a 15 minute televised speech in front of the members of the U.S. House Judiciary Committee. She presented an opening speech during the hearings that were part of the impeachment process against Richard Nixon. <coughs> George supported the Community Investment Act, Reinvestment Act of 1977, legislation that required banks to lend and make services available to underserved, poor, and minority communities. She supported the renewal of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. <coughs> and expansion of that act to cover language minority, this extended protection to Hispanics in Texas and was opposed by Texas Governor Dolph Briscoe and Secretary of State Mark White. She also authored an act that ended federal authorization of price fixing by manufacturers. From 1994 until her death, Jordan chaired the U.S. Commissions on Immigration Reform. The commission recommended that total immigration be cut by one third to approximately 5,600 per year. The commission supported in increasing enforcement against undocumented migrants, which their employees eliminated visa purposes for siblings and adult children of the United States and ending unskilled immigration except for refugees and under nuclear families. Which you know at this time we're going through all that with all the uh, people that are coming in from Mexico and Honduras and all of that. We're having a major issue with that at this time. So that was accomplished way back then, but what's happening now? I mean, you know, are they reading it? Are they looking at it? Uh, the U.S. National Archives described Barbara as the first LGBTQ woman in Congress. George's partner of approximately 20 years was Nancy Earle, an educational psychologist who met George at Cambridge. 
develop multiple, multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis in 1973. And Ms. Earl was her caretaker. Nothing was ever said as they were a long time companion, whether they were uh, partners or what. That day, Jordan died at the age of 59 from complications of pneumonia on January 17, 1996, in Austin, Texas. She also had a team. She was interred in the Texas State Cemetery. She was the first black African American to receive this honor. Jordan's grave rests near that of Father Texas, even at Austin. Thank you.
And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning hath set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that, that worse is, which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine even until now. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed in his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee so much for the miracles referred to as signs of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This first two that he did in Cana of Galilee should be an inspiration to us today. Help us to understand these even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The wedding feast of Cana is the name of the story in the Gospel of John in which Jesus performed his first public miracle. The feast took place in Cana shortly after the call of Philip and Nathaniel. According to John 21, verse 2, Cana was Nathaniel's hometown. In the Gospel account, Jesus, his mother, and his disciples are invited to a wedding at Cana in Galilee. When his mother notices that the wine, from the Greek word oinos, was run out, Jesus delivers a sign of his divinity by turning water into wine at her request. The account is taken as evidence of Jesus' approval of marriage and of earthly celebrations. It's also been used as an argument against teetotalism. One person will say, I don't believe in drinking at all. Another person says, no, Jesus drank wine and turned water into wine at the wedding feast of Canaan. Well, St. Clement of Alexandria warned, it's important to note that although Jesus made water into wine at the marriage, he did not give permission to get drunk. All things in moderation. The scripture has named wine as the symbol of his sacred blood. And there's further references to that in the New Testament. The second chapter of the Gospel of John states that Jesus was at a wedding Greek word gamos is translated wedding in Cana with his disciples. Jesus' mother told Jesus, we have no wine. Jesus replied, woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother did then said to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. Jesus ordered the servants to fill the containers with water, to dry out some and take it to the chief steward household official, master of the feast. After tasting it, without knowing where it came from, the steward remarked to the bridegroom that he had departed from the custom of serving the best wine, first by serving it last. Jesus, John adds that Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana and Galilee, and it revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Jesus would later return to Canaan, where he would perform his second public miracle. Interpreted allegorically, the good news and hope implied by the story are the words of the steward of the feast when he tasted the good wine. Everyone serves the good wine first, the inferior wine after the guests have been drunk. Uh, but you have kept the good wine until now. This could be interpreted by saying that simply it is always darkest before the dawn, but good things are on the way. The miracle may also be interpreted 
as the opposite of Moses' first public miracle of changing water, that is the Nile River, into blood. This would establish a symbolic link between Moses as the first deliverer of the Jews through their escape from Egypt and Jesus as the Savior not only of the Jews but of all people. The view of the valley looking towards Nazareth uh, from Kerbet Kana would have predominantly been a place of grapevines, of vineyards, as archaeologists have found evidence of first century wine production in this location. The early sixth century writer Antoninus Placentinus observed about Nazareth in his day. It excels in wine and oil, fruits and honey. The miracle performed at the wedding in Cana is denoted as the first of seven signs performed by the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Holy Gospel of St. John. The second sign, the healing of a nobleman's son, also occurred in the setting of Cana of Galilee. And thus, Jesus returned to Canaan. The emptiness of those six stone water pots at the wedding feast signifies the void of Judaism and its failure to make the spiritual needs of the Jewish population. Leaving them unfulfilled was still much to be desired. Truly, God had revealed himself to the Jews. Truly God had chosen them to be a light to the nations. Truly God had did wondrous things in the life of Israel. But it was not fulfilled yet. The Lord Jesus Christ waited until as a bridegroom unites with his bride to become one body, with his blood being the good wine that he was later to shed in which he has given to his disciples to drink at the Last Supper. Today, whenever we celebrate the Holy Eucharist, as we will next Sunday, we too share in that very best, the good wine, as will generations to come until the day of our Lord's return. Jesus has just spent two days in Samaria. He is now leaving for Galilee. The time in Samaria was spectacularly successful. It appears the whole town of Sychar was turning to Jesus as the Messiah and as Savior of the world. This is not new in John's Gospel. We've seen it before. According to John 2, 23 through 25, Now when Jesus was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. Jesus would later return to Cana, where he would perform his second public miracle. When Jesus mentions Jesus, well, rather, when John mentions Jesus coming to Cana in verse 46, he draws our attention to the fact that this is the place where he had done his first sign in Galilee by turning water into wine. At Capernaum, there was an official whose son was ill. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. John wants us to see in this healing of the official son. He wants us to help us overcome these blinding impulses and see the grace and the power, the mercy and the might of Jesus Christ as he heals the dying boy. The power as seen in that distance was not hindrance. The boy wasn't right there. He was 15 miles away from Pernia. Yes, it would have been nice.
unless if Jesus had been there and laid his hands on him, but that wasn't necessary. He was 15 miles away, but he could have been 15,000 miles away. It wouldn't have made any difference. Yeah, yeah. When Jesus speaks with authority, there's no spatial limitations to that power. He says it, it's done. Enough said. Man. Case closed. Yes. And the power of his healing is seen the fact that it happened immediately. No beating around the bush. Jesus draws special attention to that. They say in verse 52 that he recovered the seventh hour. That's 1 p.m. the day before. Then John says in verse 53, the Father knew that was the hour when Jesus has said to him, your son will live. Amen. He said it at 1 o'clock. It happened at 1 o'clock. Yes. At the very moment Jesus spoke, it was done. A dying boy healed with a word over a distance of 15 miles. Mm -hmm. Such is the power of Jesus. Grace and power. Mercy and might. We beheld his glory, glory of the only Son from the Father. And from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Yes. Thus may the Lord remove all pride, all entitlement, all blinding familiarity, and reveal to us the glory and the grace yes. and the power of Jesus Christ. Yes. Thus Jesus returned to Cana, where he performed his second miracle. He changed water into wine. He healed the son of an old. Yes. There's nothing too hard for Jesus to do. Amen. So does anybody at the sound of my voice, either live or virtual, who's never had an experience with Jesus Christ, we invite you today to Take advantage of God's offer. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yes. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We urge you to turn to Christ this day. The same Christ who changed water into wine. The same Christ that healed the noble of the Son. This same Christ loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to heal you. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you abundant life. Once you come to Christ this day. Let us stand our hymn of commitment number 258. Just as I am without one. Just as I am. morning to all of you here and all of you in our virtual audience. We thank you for being with us this Sunday morning and afternoon every day at this time. Um, we thank you so much for your commitment to be with us. We hope
hope that you enjoy our services. And until we see you in person, one day is great. But being in a virtual audience is also wonderful. Um, uh, if you wish to support this ministry, please mail your contributions to Bethel AME Church, 101 North 4th Street, Horsa County, Texas, 75110. You may also go online by going to our website at www.bethlehemccor.org and give under the Give Apply app. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. God bless you. As you are giving, and the Lord is in heaven on high. The more you give, the more you give to you. Just keep on giving, because it's really true that you can. Any other word before we go? Let us stand and jointly read our benediction as printed in your book. Almighty God, whose Son, whose Son our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacrament, may, may shine with the radiance of glory. glory. That he may be known, worship, and obey to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit live and reign, O God, now and forevermore. Amen. You're dismissed.